Twas the night before Christmas, when all through the house, not a creature was stirring, not even a mouse. The stockings were hung by the chimney with care, in hopes that St. Nicholas soon would be there. The children were nestled all snug in their beds, while visions of sugar plums danced in their heads. And Mama in her kerchief, and I in my cap, had just settled our brains for a long winter's nap. When out on the lawn there arose such a clatter, I sprang from the bed to see what was the matter. Away to the window I flew like a flash, tore open the shutters, and threw up the sash. The moon on the breast of the new-fallen snow gave the luster of midday to objects below, when what to my wondering eyes should appear but a miniature sleigh and eight tiny reindeer. With a little old driver so lively and quick, I knew in a moment it must be St. Nick. More rapid than eagles, his coursers they came, and he whistled and shouted and called them by name. Now Dasher, now Dancer, now Prancer and Vixen, on Comet, on Cupid, on Donder and Blitzen. To the top of the porch, to the top of the wall, now dash away, dash away, dash away all. As dry leaves that before the wild hurricane fly, when they meet with the obstacle mount to the sky, so up to the housetop the coursers they flew, with the sleigh full of toys, and St. Nicholas too. And then in a twinkling I heard on the roof the prancing and pawing of each little hoof. As I drew in my head and was turning around, down the chimney St. Nicholas came with a bound. He was dressed all in fur from his head to his foot, and his clothes were all tarnished with ashes and soot. A bundle of toys he had flung on his back, and he looked like a peddler just opening his pack. His eyes how they twinkled, his dimples how merry. His cheeks were like roses, his nose like a cherry. His droll little mouth was drawn up like a bow, and the beard of his chin was as white as the snow. The stump of a, of a pipe he held tight in his teeth, and the smoke it encircled his head like a wreath. He had a broad face and a little round belly that shook when he laughed like a bowl full of jelly. He was chubby and plump, a right jolly old elf, and I laughed when I saw him in spite of myself. A wink of his eye and a twist of his head soon gave me to know I had nothing to dread. He spoke not a word, but went straight to his work and filled all the stockings, then turned with a jerk. In laying his finger aside of his nose and giving a nod up the chimney he rose, he sprang to his sleigh, to his team gave a whistle, and away they all flew like the down of a thistle. But I heard him exclaim ere he drove out of sight, Happy Christmas to all, and to all a good night. Whenever I hear that poem, I still feel the magic of Santa Claus that a much younger Brian Cushing knew. It's thought to have been written by Clement Moore on Christmas Eve of 1822. It was first published the following year in 1823 without his knowledge, and then he wasn't attributed until 1844. Now, a few years later, in the 1850s, the house we're in right now, Thibault Farmstead in Switzerland County, Indiana, was built. Frederick and Harriet Thibault immigrated from Switzerland to the United States with their eight children in 1817. They died during the 1840s, and the property was inherited by their son, Eusti, and his wife, Mary, and they built the house that we're in now in the 1850s. So just a few years after, everybody found out who had written The Night Before Christmas, or as it was called in those days, a visit from St. Nicholas. They had 10 children, and the house and property stayed in the family for a whole other generation. Now, a few years earlier, in 1843, a hay press device had been patented in Switzerland County, Indiana, and they got one here at Thibault Farmstead uh, in 1850. And they've actually, even though the original was gone, the museum has moved a, a, another one onto site, and it is really something to see operate if you're ever here. Eventually it fell into disrepair, being vacant for several decades until the Switzerland County Historical Society took on the project of saving it in 2001. The restoration took over a decade and it finally opened in 2013. The new hay press barn was moved in in 2016 and uh, you can see uh, you can see the place at its best advantage at a country Christmas this year uh, on December the 9th, 2023, for free. Uh, there's going to be uh, cooking demonstrations and all kinds of things that would have gone on right here in the early days of the Victorian period at Christmas time in Indiana. So I highly encourage you to come out. You also get to see uh, our, another site that, that we've been at quite a bit, uh, Musée des Venoges, on the same day. They're just a few miles apart. So we've got... The Night Before Christmas, written in 1822, published in 1823, uh, attributed in 1844, and Thibault Farmstead, built just a few years later during the 1850s. 
how are we going to tie this together into one excellent Victorian Christmas drink? Well, luckily, Thibaut Farmstead has an excellent hearth kitchen that is thought to actually predate the house. There was another house on this property beforehand. So, follow me and we will figure this out. Wassail is one of the quintessential Christmas drinks. It's been around for a very long time. This recipe in particular was published in Oxford Nightcaps in 1827. So just a couple of years after a night before Christmas was written down the first time. And now the thing about that was too, they kept republishing this book for decades after it. So it was still being printed when Night Before Christmas was finally attributed to Clement Moore in 1844 and when Tebow Farmstead was built in the 1850s. So this is a really neat recipe. I thought it kind of fit in with this theme, both of A Night Before Christmas and Tebow Farmstead because the book itself just kind of carries through that same uh, period. So uh, this is an English recipe, so we're gonna use some English ingredients. And it's pretty easy, it just takes a little bit of time. And I am actually going to cut the recipe in half today because there's just Amy and me here at Tebow today. Uh, but if you wanna go for the full experience, if you've got a bigger party, then by all means, double it, triple it, whatever gets you there. So to start off with, in this bowl, I have about three quarters of a cup of sugar. We are going to take half a pint of beer and we went with the wonderful Samuel Smith's Brown Ale today. Uh, these are just shy of 15 ounces, and so it's all going to the same place. I'm gonna dump this whole thing over the sugar. Don't wanna foam it up too much. Samuel Smith's is great. It's whenever you can get it, whenever you can use it, it's a solid choice. Uh, their Brown Ale is wonderful, but also their oatmeal stout, you just can't beat it. Okay, so we've got our half a pint of English beer in with our three quarters cup of flour, and we're just gonna stir it up and try to get it to dissolve. There's not a whole lot to see here, so you're just gonna have to take my word for it. We're going to grate half a nutmeg into the mix. And the next part is just some ginger, all right? That's all they say. They didn't say how much, just some ginger. Uh, so get you some ginger root, uh, peel a little bit, and just however much appeals to you. I'm gonna say don't be too conservative with it because a bunch more beer is going in here and the ginger really adds a great flavor to this drink. There's part of one. Let's try a little bit more. Two wine glasses of sherry. Now remember, in the Victorian period, a uh, wine glass is about two ounces. If you don't have a two ounce measure, that's four tablespoons. Luckily today, we do have our little two ounce Victorian wine glass and we are using uh, Bailey's Bristol Cream Sherry. All right, this is an English sherry and it's not expensive, but it is pretty delicious and it goes well in here. So we're gonna do two wine glasses or four ounces, or total that would be eight tablespoons of our sherry. Mix that up. And 50 more ounces of our beer. So whatever beer you're using, just look at how many ounces it is and try to even it out to 50 ounces. I'll say though, this doesn't have to be quite an exact science. So if a tiny bit more or less goes in there, it's not gonna be a big deal. Okay, and we're part way there. Let's see how we're doing so far. It's already going well, but here's the next thing. 
Mm, yeah, definitely don't be shy about the ginger. That little bit of spice on there is really good. Uh, but the next thing we're gonna do, we gotta be patient. We're gonna cover this over and we let it sit for a couple hours, two or three hours or so. Set that to the side. And there's some other things we can be doing in the meantime. We're just gonna take half a lemon. We're gonna peel it. And as you can see, I got that in one nice ribbon. The more intact you can keep it, the better, because if you're gonna be saving this overnight, you wanna be able to fish the lemon peel out of there. Otherwise, it'll impart an off taste. And we just need two tablespoons of sugar. I decided to use a, a dark turbinado sugar today, just because I was kind of curious to see how that might play with the brown ale. I'm gonna put that in there. Muddle it a bit. And set that aside till we're ready for it. And what you're gonna see over the course of the time that it sits is that sugar is gonna draw those oils out of the lemon peel. Now, there are two options here uh, for the next part. You could either use toasted bread, or they say an even older form is to use roasted apples, okay? And now at Christmas, we're always kind of hearkening back to some earlier days, older times. And so I thought it would be really neat to do what in 1827 they said was the old fashioned way of doing this for roasted, uh, with roasted apples. Now the problem is they don't tell you how to roast the apples. So we could guess, or we could just go to another source. And just a few years before this recipe was published, Hannah Glass's cookbook of 1808 contained instructions for roasting apples. And so that's what we're gonna do. In our pan here, our stoneware plate, uh, we've got just some more coarse sugar uh, and some cloves. She doesn't say how much to use, just some. Uh, we are going to add to that a wine glass of red wine. Give that a little bit of a mix. Some lemon peel. And I was surprised by this, but she said to actually roast the apples whole. I thought they would have been cut up. So we've just got two green apples. We're gonna pop those in there. And the next thing we're gonna have to do is go to the hearth. And now what she says to do is to bake this in a quick oven. So if you're doing this at home, you're gonna to wanna to put this in the oven at 450 degrees. She says to bake it for an hour. I found that to be quite excessive. All right, just keep an eye on it uh, and see how it's doing so you don't completely cook it to death. It can be, mushy, uh, but you don't want to overdo it. So just kind of keep an eye on it. What we're going to do, since Thibaut has this wonderful hearth over here, we're going to put this in a Dutch oven. If we get over there, you'll see we have a couple of S-hooks on the bottom of the Dutch oven so that the plate is not uh, touching the bottom of the Dutch oven itself. Then we're going to put coals underneath and on top. We're going to keep an eye on it. And when we come back, I will report on how long it took. So as we suspected, it did not take an hour to roast those apples. It was 30 minutes flat and they were beyond good to go. Okay. So, yeah. So we've got our wassail mixture here that's been sitting for two to three hours, right? Yeah. Yeah. Give that a little mix. It already smells really good with the ginger and the apples. I feel like this could be a whole experience of making. It's not just about the tasting. Yeah, absolutely. And again, like I say, don't be shy with that ginger. I like that no. spice going in there. Mm -hmm. um, they said roasted apples. Okay, so I just go ahead and I put the whole of the mixture in. Sugar, wine, cloves, and all. This is a decadent experience. And then our lemon peel and sugar. Uh, we can really see those oils have been expressed. Oh yeah. Over the past hour. Yeah, it's definitely a whole process. You don't wanna just throw it all in at once. Well, that kind of goes back to the point that we're always making too about the evolution of mixology and the fact that it's really largely the railroad that brought about these quicker mm -hmm. individual portions. This is from an earlier time. Yeah. Uh, this is from 
the dawn of the Victorian period when things were still very much like they had been for a while yeah. and things were starting to change, but you don't notice it right away. So it's a longer, slower experience. Yeah. Take your time, enjoy the process, have a bunch of friends around, sit over a bowl of something. Yes. Stop what you were doing and for goodness sake, enjoy Christmas. Yes. So. It looks beautiful too. This is the beautiful silver punch lady Lenny gave me for Christmas a few years ago. Santa knew what he wanted. <laughs> it doesn't say that it has to be heated. We're serving at room temperature, but if you would like a hot punch, by all means, oh, yeah. heat it up. Here's to you, my dear. I knew, my love. Mm. Oh, that's really nice. Yeah. Yeah, and I feel like that could be, that's good room temperature, that could be chilled, that mm -hmm. could be heated. That's very nice. Mm. Well, this is something that we just discovered last year yeah. um, because our friends over at Vinoche, also here in Switzerland County, mm -hmm. um, had asked us to do it for an event of theirs. And this was one of the most delightful surprises yes. we've had. And this is one too that I feel like drinking it, the experience begins with your nose. Yes. Begins with smelling all of those delicious spices and then it hits your tongue and goes down your throat. Mm. That did not hold back on the ginger. No, and I, it does not feel like too much. Yeah. And so also the recipe says that this is going to be bottled up and let sit for a couple of days before you serve it. Mm -hmm. um, and that is, we're not, we can't try that here because we got to go back home. But, <laughs> uh, but, but that would certainly be worth it to see how yeah. over the course of a couple of days, mm -hmm. uh, those spices and those yeah. apples and everything that was in the roasted apples uh, really kind of mingled together. The big thing I cannot emphasize enough is if you're going to let it sit overnight, Get rid of that yes. lemon peel. Yeah. Otherwise, it's going to throw the flavor. It's going to taste yeah. bitter and odd. We've learned so, that the hard way. The hard, I mean, oh, it can't be that big a yeah. deal yet. No. That's going in the fireplace. Yeah. So, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's done its job. So, great to finally be here at Thibaut uh, filming uh, an episode of the Victorian Bar Room. Yeah. Uh, we absolutely love this place. We hope to be back very soon. Yeah. Uh, if you are in the area or ever passing through the area, you should absolutely stop in here to see what they've oh, accomplished yeah. because yeah. it's really unique. It's yeah. great. It's beautiful. Yeah. Uh, it's one of those museums, too, where I feel like it's a little bit more interactive yeah. than a lot of historic house museums are. There's a good reason why you can't go into certain parts of a lot of historic oh, sure. museums. Yeah, sure. But uh, here, uh, the Switzerland County Historical Society has kind of solved some of those problems at Thibault uh, to kind of get you more up close and personal with the history. And even yeah. though you might not be able to touch everything, you feel more like you're in the scene. And they do yeah. a really good job of pointing out which things you can and can't touch. Yeah. And you get to walk mm -hmm. into the room and really experience it. Uh, yeah, and I think having something like this just really ups the experience. So they'll be doing what their country Christmas country on Christmas December 9th. Mm -hmm. And if you want to come experience this kitchen in all of its glory and really see it being used, come by December 9th, 2023 for country Christmas. Also future years right around that time. Yeah, it's free. Yeah, it's yeah. free. Right. <laughs> so uh, thanks to Martha Bladen, the director yes. of Thibault. Uh, the Switzerland County Historical Society and just everybody who has come together to make this place something special. Uh, thank you for hosting us. Yeah. Um, we will certainly be back. Absolutely. Uh, maybe, maybe not for a video, maybe just for an experience. Yeah. To do some demonstrations, yeah. stuff like that. Just so, to relax. Yeah. As we move towards wrapping up another year, a happy Christmas to all. And to all a good night.